Today we are actually going to go through an installation of an on-premise management server for a Cronus Cyber Protect version 16. A lot of these steps will also apply to older versions of a Cronus. So depending on what you are deploying in your environment, you can follow along. To start with, we need to have the installation file. There's a couple of ways to get it. The easiest way is directly from your Cronus account. You can see I have some licenses registered here. Uh, if I hit the open cloud console with the drop down next to it, that opens me up to our on-premise deployment options. If I come and choose download installer, I'm going to be given selections to, to choose what I want to install for installation in my environment. Acronis makes it rather easy. We package everything into a single exe. We have a web installer. This requires an active internet connection. It'll download the components that you're specifying during the install. This tends to be smaller. Other installation files here on the left is where we get the full installer. So the installers that have every component and don't require an internet connection. You can see we break it down to 64-bit, 32-bit versions of Windows. Same idea for Linux. We also do offer an all-in-one of VMware appliance if you're in a, a pure VMware style environment. To save time, I've already downloaded the Windows 64 bit and I have it set on the machine that I'm going to run as our, our management server. I've consoled into the management server here. Um, so I've logged in. Here you can see the installation file. I've gone ahead and actually run this already so we can see it started here at the bottom. When you first start with the installation file, it's going to start with the license agreement. So I can simply come in and say, read the license agreement, make sure that you understand everything that's inside of there, accept the terms of the license agreement, and then hit proceed. Now we make this rather easy. If you wanted to just do a simple install, say you're running a smaller, simplified environment, you can see the top option here will install the protecting agent and the management server. So both are required to live with each other. You can see here in the icon at the top, it's showing our management server component. You could also use the same installer just to install the agent. So on a client device, for example, I, I could just run the install there. That would install simply the agent and have it point back to a management server. In this case, we've got you know the big green install button based off these simplified options here. We also have the capability of creating an MST and MSI file. That's this link here at the bottom. Or we have the combination of, or the ability to do a customized installation. In this option, Right, because I want to change the directory that I'm installing to, I'm going to go ahead and say, let's customize this installation. Simple options inside of here. First, we're going to choose what do we want to install. So if I come in here and hit change, you can see here that we're going to have our management server component. We have our components for remote installation, right? So that allows us to do remote pushes to, to various machines. We do offer a new centralized dashboard in version 16. Um, that's if you have multiple management servers in your environment, you could run a centralized dashboard to have reporting on all of those. As I mentioned, the agent for Windows is going to automatically be installed. We do this because the management server itself doesn't actually do any work in our environments. The agent for Windows is what does all the work, such as backups or connecting to network shares. There's some optional components that we automatically install for you, things that we think make the most sense to have installed, the bootable media builder, the command line tool, and our cyber protect monitor. Pretty self-explanatory on what each of those will do, but we, we recommend having these on the management server as well. There's other pieces. For example, our storage node or our Pixie server, if I wanted to have our agent for VMware running on Windows, I could. But in this case, I'm going to leave this just as, as is. Coming back, this is where I'm going to choose my installation path. So I can choose where I want to install these. So you can kind of see here, it's telling me kind of what we're expecting to have on the C drive. In this case, in this environment, we actually install everything to a, to a secondary drive here. So I can come through and browse, or if I look at the file explorer, I can come in and see, hey, we've got an E drive that's marked, earmarked for data. So in this case, I'm just gonna change the C to an E. You could change the directories if you want, uh, but the software will automatically create that program files folder in Acronis for us. Um, you can kind of see here, you know, once I come and change this, it's actually gonna tell me how much space I need. Um, in this case, you can kind of see, hey, we need to unpack some files that ends up at 8.5 gigs. After installation, we're only gonna be using about six gigs. So hit down there on E. It's gonna recalculate that space. We do still require some components to be installed with the operating system. So that's why you're seeing still some usage on C drive here. You'll see most of it's going to E, some of it's coming to C. We do need separate service accounts or you know, accounts to run our services under. So you can see for the agent service, that's gonna be for the backup agent. By default, this is gonna use the service user accounts and that's what Acronis recommends. It's a simplified built-in account to run services like this on the server itself. Um, you would use this on both your clients and on the management server side. 
For our management server services, we do require specific users. So in this case, we're creating a new account. So this would create a new local user on the machine. Um, that's going to be called the AMS user. It creates a randomly generated password. That password is not stored anywhere. This account is set to not be able to be logged into. It's simply used for running our services. If you needed to run under you know, a specific service account for that, you can come in and say, hey, yeah, let's use the following account. There is a backend database that's needed for a management server. By default, we utilize an SQL Lite, and that's what we'll be using in this environment. If you are in a larger environment, and by larger we mean scaling above a thousand machines being managed by our management server, we do recommend using an external Microsoft SQL Server. So with version 16, we support anything from SQL Server 2012 or newer. Um, versions running on Linux are not supported. It does need to be a Windows-based Microsoft SQL Server, and any addition is supported. So it could be you know standard or, or data center in the SQL Server instance. But because this environment's a little smaller, we're just going to stay with our SQL Lite here. Other components, we can choose what, what ports we want to utilize for communication. If we need to use a proxy server for getting out to the internet, we can. In this case, we're going to leave this as default. I'm going to go ahead and click install here. We're going to watch it extract files. So we're going to see a green progress bar here, and then we're going to actually see it go through and do the installation. At this point, we're going to pause because we don't want to watch this entire green bar as it goes across. This, this takes a couple of moments or a couple of minutes to, to kind of finish here. We'll come back when it's wrapped up and we'll talk about accessing the management server. Okay, and we're back. We can now see that the installation was successful. Uh, we have the option here to connect to localhost port 9877. Because we do utilize a web interface, you can actually access this from anywhere that you have direct network access to the machine on that specific port. You can see we offer to open the web console. So if I was to hit close here, this will open our default browser. In this case, we're swapping over to Edge because this install had Internet Explorer as default. So we'll use Edge here. Hit OK. It'll open up a browser and that automatically navigate to that localhost port 9877. That then gets us in to the management server where I can sign in as a current Windows user or enter the username and password. If I was to hit sign in, it's going to go ahead and take me into the console. First thing you're going to see when you pop into a console is a request to activate the management server. Um, so you can kind of see it pops this up here to activate the product, start protecting your workloads, sign into your Chronos account. We're going to leave it at this stage though because we're going to be covering that and license assignment in a different video hope this was helpful and everyone have a great day